Well, have you ever felt that someone was watching you, but there was really no one there? What if someone really was watching? Well, in tonight's special assignment, Ross Blackstone introduces us to Northern Californians who say the government is monitoring their every move, reading their thoughts, and controlling their minds. That modern gang stalking is a global system of neuro warfare, cognitive warfare. It is the modern continuation of the CIA's MK Ultra slash Monarch trauma-based mind control program. Effectively, it's um, it's when a, a, a targeted individual or a victim tries to describe what they're hearing as sounds, realistic sounds or voices that are being projected into their heads from a distance. Continuous, multiple responses. Trauma-based mind control is based upon the responses of the victim. Each response, each synaptic response is an electromagnetic emission pattern in the victim's brain. You know, 15, 20 people called ahead of me, still sitting there, and they're not able to help me. If you can explain to the people, uh, could you explain how we're capable of hearing voices in our head that other people can't hear? Yeah, and this is very complex, but, and there are actually several technologies. There are at least four different technologies that can pipe voices into the human head. I became a security specialist for SIS, specializing in executive protection. And it was in that context uh, that I became aware of uh, what I describe as a social engineering program. Now, what we're looking at here and the development that's taken place, and I've seen this before, is that yesterday some government entity was taking a satellite and, and uh, sending down brain interfering signals. And what this machine did is it captured that attack wave. When I was in South Africa uh, speaking, a teacher of 30 years, he said that childhood suicides were unknown. Misbehavior to the extent of severe aggression was unknown. And he said as soon as the transmitter went up near his school, they say the waves can also control their minds and their bodies. They can cause your heart to hurt, they can cause you blast your stomach, they can cause your ankles to give out. Wherever they can direct the pain to, your body fills all of it. Uh, while there were hundreds of programs in the CIA's MKUltra uh, program back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh, which were exposed in the 1970s uh, church senate hearings, today there are many, many more programs and projects. Once I began to realize that SIS was experimenting on its own employees, my fellow security specialist, I was outraged. I later learned that um, my company was involved in a larger social engineering program that encompassed the entire city of Seattle. They can control my emotions. Yes. How do they do that? Well, if you put a person under a functional MRI, you can see the points of the brain that light up and classify each emotional state. You can tell that person is an alcoholic. This kind of wave would have the effect to make people nauseated, headaches, uh, you feel lethargic, you would feel anxiety, you would uh, not be in a very good mood. And he said as soon as the transmitter went up near his school, they started to have psychiatric problems with the children and he said today he said all of my children all 30 in my class are now on Ritalin for poor behavior the government has confessed to similar operations in the past using LSD or hypnosis now hundreds of self-proclaimed mind control victims say these documents prove it's happening again so obviously the you know, it's controversial because it, it crosses the line between what is mentally ill or what is medically somebody who needs help and what is technology that's been used. So there's, there's a bit of a line there which is not very clear. The second premise, and this is from Brian Tu's lecture, the four primary agencies carrying out global gang stalking mind control operations are the CIA and DIA, which hire the neuroscience hive mind teams as subcontractors, the Department of Defense, which supplies the money through their black budget projects, and the NSA, which provides the top scientists. The first response is, is simply the, the system or, or the stalkers, etc., surveillance teams, engineering, soliciting a response from the victim. But in order to determine coherent patterns of thought, 
for the RNM system to identify, develop, and integrate back into RNM data, it must continually happen over and over again. And I later learned that they were indeed experimenting with, when I say experimenting, voice to skull, hive mind, behavior modification technology that is frequency based and directed at a targeted individual to basically control their entire person. Now what people don't know is you can induce that, those sets, that it, it's called a, an emotional signal cluster onto other human beings to feel physical pain. It's again a mapping, a cloning, if you will, of another person's brain waves onto yours. Now, this morning, when we turn the system back on again and make another analysis, that wave is, is gone. So they decided that they just wanted to give us a one solid day dose of it. It did shut down uh, last night, just before the uh, banquet, and so we, we were all, we had a good solid eight, ten hours of exposure to this thing. Documents like this from the United Nations it talks about the electromagnetic weapons and the Russians wanted to ban the weapons. Welsh is not the only one. In his latest book, Earth Rising, renowned author and speaker Nick Begich cites more than 30 patents that show mind control is possible by using light, sound, or electronic fields. Uh, two, Brian Two suggests there are tens of millions of targeted individuals in America and tens of millions more around the world. Individuals are placed into this program because they fall into one of four categories, according to Two. But basically, people are selected from all over the country. They are selected uh, for many different reasons. Often it is because they are isolated. They don't have a lot of money, friends, or family. With this technology, not only can the secret services of any country listen to every single thing you are saying through your cell phone, but they can also follow everywhere you go. So they know everywhere you go and everything you are saying, and they can monitor the words of every single meeting that you sit down at. But there is a, there are patterns out there. It's there is somebody, I think it was the 70s or 60s, somebody set out to try and create a technology that can transmit sounds and voices into somebody else's head from a distance. They also tend to target people who are into what I would call alternative research. There is people that disagree with the government, people that are into researching things like 9-11. To force the victim into response statistics, to and to uh, multiple responses, that's, ver that's verification. To to generate coherent patterns of thought, which the supercomputer can then identify, develop, and integrate back into RNM data. So in order to determine coherent patterns, one response is not enough. They need multiple responses for each scenario that they develop.